Thank you all for coming. I'm Robert Ginsberg. I'm the jazz curator here at the Walton Arts Center and the founder and artistic director of the Northwest Arkansas Jazz Society. Thank you, thank you. It's really uh, a special night. This is uh, the seventh season of the Northwest Arkansas Jazz All-Star Youth Ensemble. Some of you have students in this band that are veterans. They've been in the band for a while. And uh, some of them are going to be leaving this year. It's always a surprise how the next season is going to look. But what an amazing group of musicians we have tonight. Our ensemble today represents students from seven regional high schools who auditioned to become a part of this band. And for the past three months, they've been performing and rehearsing to, protect their, to perfect their skills as jazz musicians. And I can tell you they have worked very hard and diligently at this task. We're all about to experience the fruits of their labor. I have a few other announcements if you'll bear with me. I'm particularly honored to welcome back our guest artist who first appeared in a concert for the Jazz Society about 15 years ago with his band, The Latin Side. He returned again and performed in concert at the Walton Arts Center, and he worked with the second year incarnation of the Jazz All-Stars. He's a remarkable musician, he's an incredible clinician, and he was here last year with the Mingus Big Band, and I'm referring to multi-Grammy nominated artist Conrad Herwig. Yes, he will be with us. Thank you for your patience, it's great to see you. And pr please welcome the seventh incarnation of the Northwest Arkansas Jazz All-Star Youth Ensemble. Check, check. Oh, there you are. The, uh, this first tune is a classic Count Basie chart called Switch in Time. And uh, we like to use all kinds of songs in order to teach jazz, but this is definitely from the classic big band catalog by Count Basie, Switch in Time.
Thank you. That was uh, Nicholas Graziani on trombone, and um, James Schufelt on trumpet, and Connor Cowart on the piano. Many of you probably heard of the dark side of force, right? If you're a Star Wars fan, you know, don't go to the dark side. Um, but this next tune is called the dark side of the blues, so you get to experience and the audience, the dark side. That's right. We made a quick switch. I'm sorry. Forget all that, what I said. It was a beautiful introduction. I had it all worked out. You know, I'll tell you about the dark side later. But um, uh, this next tune is by the late, great Roy Hargrove. He passed away recently, a uh, great jazz trumpet player. And this tune is called Soppin' the Biscuit.
Sopping the Biscuit. That was uh, Christian Iglesias on the uh, tenor sax. And uh, Evan Bankston on the trumpet. And Lucas Merriman, bass trombone. And a little drum solo action with uh, Juan Segura on the drums. Okay, so now we're going to the dark side, you know. Um, but this is a, a, a tune, I think Mark Taylor, Mark Harris? Anybody? Oh, <laughs> Andrew Clausen, sorry. Dark Side of the Blues, it's a little bit more medium, slower tempo. Here we go. Yeah, you're gonna hear some Barry Sachs from Matthew Lewis, give him a hand. on the trombone.
That was uh, Nick Plumley on the guitar solo there at the end. <laughs> this next tune is by another great jazz trumpet player um, named um, Lee Morgan. But before we announce this tune, we're going to announce our guest artist. He's going to come out and play with us on this tune. But um, Conrad, it was a pleasure having him to work with the kids. And uh, he's a great person and he really helped us out. And he himself is like a walking, you know, jazz history. Let's give a big round of applause for Conrad Herwig. Connor Knopp on Alta Sack.
Cooper on the trumpet, Jack Cooper. Conrad Herwig, give him a hand. Uh, this next tune is, is a tune by Milt Jackson named, called Bags Groove. Anybody know what instrument Milt Jackson played? Yeah, the vibraphone, right. We happen to have a vibraphone back here. So Andrew Weedman, who just played that nice little solo on the drums, He's going to give us, uh, at one point in time, he's going to give us a vibe solo on Bag's Groove.
Again, Conrad Herwig, trombone. Previously in that song, that was Aiden Taylor on the trumpet. <laughs> Oliver Ramey, tenor sax. Of course, we know that it was Andrew Weedman back on the vibes. Yeah. Christian Iglesias on the tenor sax. The great Adrian Salazar on the trumpet. And Eli Drano on the piano. This is the next tune, is another jazz trumpet player tune. Um, it's based on uh, Miles Davis' the song, So What? But we put a little twist to it. We put it in the Phrygian mode, so we call it So Phrygian What? Thank you. 
Russell. William Russell. Let me know. Conrad Herwig, once again. I don't know if you could hear me. That was Aiden Taylor on the trumpet. So, sometimes. And Nick Plumley on the guitar. And of course, William Russo on the alto sax. This is one of Conrad's tunes. I'm going to do, you want to say anything? Hello, how's everybody doing tonight? Great. It's really an honor and a pleasure to be back in Fayetteville uh, performing with this ensemble and to be participating with the Northwest Arkansas Jazz Society and here at the Walton Performing Arts Center. It's really an amazing oasis of, of culture and art that you have here in Arkansas. It's fantastic. You, you can give yourselves a round of applause. You know, this doesn't exist everywhere, and it's, it's really fantastic to um, be able to uh, pay it forward to the next generations of not only, you know, great 
musicians and artists, but just young folks in general, you know, um, it's amazing uh, just the, you know, of course, many of these musicians are going to end up, you know, pursuing music in college and other things, but, but not all. And <clears throat> there's something that I think is incredibly valuable, and I call it improvisers for life. Um, in other words, part of the fabric and the, of our culture, of who we are in this country, are improvisers, right? I mean, it's a history, right, from George Washington and Thomas Jefferson and Abraham Lincoln and Martin Luther King and so many of our great figures in our history have been improvisers, and jazz, that's what we do. And so, you know, a lot of times, um, and I give uh, Robert Ginsburg so much credit for continuing this, and Rick, let's hear a round of applause for them. <laughs> and the reason I'll, before we continue with this next number, I'll just give you one little point, is, um, you know, these folks will be improvisers for life. All the young people that we support, not only playing jazz, but doing music and art and dance and drama, they improvise. And so at some point, you know, not only will they be accomplished jazz musicians, but they'll be doctors and lawyers and, you know, business people. But imagine if your doctor, let's imagine that we, <clears throat> in an emergency, God forbid, and you're on the operating table and something goes terribly wrong, and then uh, your doctor happened to play jazz saxophone <laughs> and was able to improvise in that moment, right? Instead of panicking, they're like, okay, let's, let's improvise. And then all of a sudden, they'll save your life. So you realize that jazz will save your life, okay? <laughs> Okay, with that said, we're gonna continue with probably one of the most iconic compositions in the history of jazz. And this um, comes from an album that I did uh, 25 years ago. It was uh, and is the Latin side of John Coltrane. And John Coltrane is one of our spiritual mentors and idols musically and culturally and spiritually. And he, he wrote this um, piece for a universal audience, and this is a love supreme.
Thank you so much. Let's hear it for this great band. Thank you. <clears throat> Obviously, that's a universal message. And we're going to continue now. And this is um, an arrangement I did and a, a reharmonization. Um, wow, it's going back a number of years. And I believe, if I'm not mistaken, it was 1997. Could have been 1999, actually. I take that back. It was George Gershwin's um, 100th uh, anniversary, 100th celebration, 100 year birthday celebration. And I was working with the great Joe Henderson, who was one of the iconic tenor saxophonists at the time. And his record label, which was Verve Records, wanted him to record Porgy and Bess. And uh, I was telling the band yesterday, they couldn't find anyone to be Porgy, so they got Sting to be Porgy on that particular record. And uh, Bess is Chaka Khan. And uh, anyway, I wrote a number of reharmonizations. And this particular version didn't make it, um, maybe because it didn't fit Sting. I don't know why exactly, because Sting is singing on the record uh, this particular composition. But I uh, arranged and reconfigured from the original into uh, a jazz 6-8-3-4 uh, um, uh, setting of the classic George Gershwin song, It Ain't Necessarily So. So we hope you enjoy our version from Porgy and Bess. Thank you.
Thank you so much once again for George Gershwin. Let's hear it for the band. <clears throat> so John Coltrane is one of our heroes, and we're going to play another composition of his. And this one he dedicated to his sister, who she played flute. And uh, he wrote a very interesting number, um, reminiscent of a Thelonious Monk tune in it, kind of. But uh, this comes from 1960. And he called this one Saida's Song Flute for his sister, Saida.
Thank you. We have uh, one more left. Thank you so much for John Coltrane and for this band and for yourselves. Give yourselves a round of applause also. Um, also, I wanted to mention, I, I don't think the program's route. There's a really cool program with everyone's name and all the, you know, compositions and uh, stuff about the program and the All-Star Youth Ensemble. So on your way out, pick one up and you can keep it for your scrapbooks and, you know, they come in handy over time. I still have some of these from two centuries ago when I, when I was doing this stuff too. And uh, we're going to close with a composition that is very near and dear to my heart and should be near and dear to everyone in Arkansas as well. Um, I play with the Charles Mingus Big Band. In fact, we were here fairly recently. When was that? Last, last, summer. last summer. Yeah, it was fairly recent, within the past six to nine months. <laughs> Time goes by so quickly, but it was the centennial of uh, Charles Mingus birth. In fact, on uh, April 22nd, he was just uh, 101 years old. But this next composition is um, one of his iconic um, social justice pieces. And you know, jazz is a music of freedom. We know that. It's a gift from our African-American great-grandmothers and great-grandmothers to the world. And it is a music of triumph. It's a music of protest. When you think about freedom, I mean, one aspect we were talking about, these young jazz musicians, there's not an entity, there's not a force on this planet that can keep them from freely playing whatever they want to play in the moment that they're playing their solos. Nothing can stop them. Jazz is that music of freedom. And, you know, Charles Mingus was one of those folks who created a philosophy of jazz. You know, there's the great jazz musicians of all time, Louis Armstrong, you know, Count Basie, Duke Ellington, Charlie Parker, you know, all the greats, Dizzy Gillespie, you know, Billie Holiday, <laughs> down to Miles Davis and John Coltrane, and, you know, all of, you know, Wynton Marsalis today. And Mingus articulated a philosophy of freedom. And the thing is, freedom is an expanding entity. And when the more free we are, the more it expands our consciousness. And when you have consciousness expanding, it gives you power. And as John Coltrane just told us, that power is a love supreme. Because we are, have the ability to empathize, and we have the ability to um, understand you know, all of the other you know, fellow travelers that are traveling on this planet at 30,000 miles an hour with us. And so, Charles Mingus wrote this composition in 1960. It's called Prayer for Passive Resistance. <clears throat> and the reason it should be very meaningful to everyone in Arkansas is this arrangement was transcribed by one of my really close and dear friends, and that's the great John Stubblefield from Little Rock, Arkansas. Can we hear a round of applause yeah. for the great John Stubblefield? <clears throat> one of the all-time greats. And, and he was a mentor to me in New York City 40 years ago, and then we started playing with a bunch of people. Then I started playing with him in the Mingus Big Band. And sadly, um, now it's getting back to almost 15 years ago, um, he you know, came down with cancer. So he was diagnosed with cancer, and he had been working on this arrangement. And so uh, he was admitted to Sloan Kettering Cancer Center, and it was sort of towards the end, and I would go visit him, and then he gave me this music, and he told me, he, you know, sadly, he said, look, I, you know, nobody gets out of here alive, and I'm not either, so write this arrangement, this next arrangement. But what we would do is I would go, and on sunny days, he'd get in the wheelchair, and we'd go down to the Irish pub, and uh, we asked the doctor, he, he said, well, can he have a, a Guinness? And the doctor said, well, that Guinness isn't going to kill him. Go ahead, you know. <laughs> so he'd go down, and he'd have a hamburger and a Guinness. And uh, we would discuss this arrangement. And then, you know, sadly, he passed. And then my responsibility was to complete this work 
for the Mingus Big Band, and we recorded it on an album called Live in Tokyo um, at the Tokyo Blue Note, and it was nominated for a Grammy, but it's really, the inspiration comes from Charles Mingus and his prayer for passive resistance, and then through the transcription of the great John Stubblefield, and then really, my work was just to orchestrate and complete the arrangement so we can perform it for you tonight. So once again, Prayer for Passive Resistance by Charles Mingus, transcribed by the great John Stubblefield. So we hope you enjoy. And uh, let me just say that uh, you know Charles Mingus, if you didn't know, was a bass player. So playing the part of Charles Mingus is our own Connor Abbott <laughs> on the bass. Yeah. Well, you know, and, and just to take, you know, carry it an extra, when we talk about Charles Mingus, because it was just his 100th birthday we were here, he, he was a virtuoso innovator on the bass. He composed in many, many different styles. And this is a blues. It was one of his styles. But, you know, I urge all of you to, you know, just check him out and to, um, and also to just honor the, the legacy of the great John Stubblefield, who's one of the great citizens of this great state. So thank you so much.
Conrad Herwig. Your jazz all stars. Stand up, guys. Conrad Herwig, everybody. Northwest Arkansas Youth All-Stars. Big round of applause. Thank you so much. Be safe driving home. Have a good night.